we had a son on the 7th of January. And while we was at the hospital, a lady called after he was born, saying that she needed to come to the house and check the house and make sure he had a crib and all this and make sure everything was up to par. So we was like, okay. I've never been, neither one of my family members have ever been involved in a defect case. <laughs> with attorney Vince Davis from California and attorney Greg from Texas. We're going to take another call and this time the call is going actually it's going to be Alan from Georgia. Alan are you there? Hey how you doing? I'm good. Do you have a story to tell or question to ask us? Um, I have both ma'am. Okay go ahead and start. You want to start with the question? Oh uh, I'd rather tell the story first. All right, go ahead. All right, um, I'm 38. This is my first child. I'm the only child by my mother. I'm married. Me and my wife have been married three years. Um, we had a son on the 7th of January, and while we was at the hospital, a lady called after he was born, saying that she needed to come to the house and check the house and make sure he had a crib and all this, and make sure everything was up to par. So we was like, okay, I've never been, neither one of my family members have ever been involved in a defect case or anything. So the lady came to the house, I think it was like two days later, and she came in, she had a sit down with us, she looked at the house, and she went back in the room where his crib and everything is, and she said, well, he got everything he needed or whatever. So um, she left, you know, talked whatever was last, and then she had my wife signed a HIPAA uh, um, HIPAA agreement, which I didn't understand, but she signed it and told her that she needed to take a um, drug test, that both of us needed to comply to a drug test. Um, she was going to send a lady to the house, but that day I wasn't home. I had went out and was working, or really trying to get a uh, belt for the dry in. The lady came, took my wife's hair, and left. And I was texting the lady on the phone. I told her I'm, I'm about to be to the house. And my wife said that she didn't stay here no more than two minutes. And she left. They said that I uh, tested positive because I just didn't want to take the drug test. And that counted against me. But the whole thing about it, they said my wife was um, had methamphetamines or whatever in her system. But on the court date, I mean on the thing on the court, Three days from uh, November, October, and December, she was negative. We went and got the um, records from from the uh, OBY, OGBYN or whatever. I don't know. I'm not with that, but she tested negative, and they saying that she tested positive. So the guy came with her that day. They came and got my son. They came and got him on February the 2nd, and we had court on February the 5th. And I was told that we're supposed to have court before they come and get him, but the lady had just came and got him, and then she just showed us, I mean, introduced us to um, my case, and he came, gave my wife a, um, a piece of paper saying that whatever she took on the drug test when they got her hair follicle, and they said it was positive. All right, so we had court, and they said we had to do a case plan or whatever, whatnot. We haven't seen any paperwork. My son is right now with my mother. And they saying we got to go through the case plan. They we still on continuance right now because they're waiting on the drug test. They came back. I talked to the caseworker uh, day four yesterday, and he said our oral swabs came back negative. And now we're waiting on the hair follicle of my wife's because they didn't get one for me because my hair is too short. And we're having we've had three uh, supervised visitations, and we're still in continuance waiting on to go back to court waiting on the drug uh, screen to come back. And we ain't seen no paperwork. I even asked my mother 
with she's so old fashioned that she's believing everything that the man telling her, okay, they do the case plan, they'll get their son back within three months. It's been to be three it's about to be three months. And we still ain't seen no paperwork. On the paperwork they sent was saying that they was trying to put my son into a foster care and ain't nothing wrong. I mean he ripped, he, he ripped up the case plan when he came and talked to us that day when we were getting ready to have court. He showed my wife a case plan, and I said, uh, you can just type that up anyway. He had not been signed by a supervisor, anybody, not even him. It wasn't notarized or anything, and he, he said, well, Miss Harris, you can just hand that back to me. He took it from her and ripped it up, but we kept the um the drug test, the hair follicle that she did first, and which now they're saying that they're waiting on to see if her levels will go down. But the thing I can't get, if she was positive at the hospital when y'all said she was, why have her take a hair follicle? I don't understand it. And I have no money. I've been running around here like a chicken with his head cut off. This is my first child. I love my son. The house that we stay in is paid for. We have a car. We're not working right now because of the, the pandemic or whatever, whatnot, but I am trying to find employment, but everything we need, we have. I mean, we're not stressing for nothing, to everything. And she didn't have anything in her system when she had him. He has nothing in his system. And they just came, the lady came that day, and she said, well, Alan, I texted you last night. I said, I texted you too. You know, I still had a text message on my phone. And she said, well, I'm at the door right now. When I went to the door, she was standing at the door with another guy. Mr. Blackshaw, which is my caseworker right now, and two cops, they come take my son. And I just don't understand what, what's what's going on. And I'm ignorant to everything that's going on. And I'm walking around here trying to find a lawyer and the court-appointed lawyer that we have. He's not even he's not even with us. When we was on court, on um, it was something they had us dial into, but we could see. And I'm telling the um, telling the lawyer that I, that we have, hey. She took a drug test. They got her hair follicle. They didn't get mine that day because I wasn't home. So that made me look bad, and they said I re- I um just didn't want to take it. And that made, like, I like I lied. Hey, Alan. Like, Two minutes, man. I ma'am. hate to interrupt you, but, Alan. Yes, ma'am. I want, I want these attorneys to be able to help you, so do you want to go ahead and ask them a question? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, what do I do? Well, you know, that's the tricky question. Um, are you able to talk to your court-appointed attorney? I call him. I call him Mr. Davis. He doesn't answer, and I leave messages with my number, and he still doesn't call back. Okay. Are you able to uh, maybe find a private attorney in your area where you can go and have a free consultation? I've been on the um, Internet and filling out the, the little – email things they email me back but when i call back the person just says well i have the lawyer call you and i haven't received one yet okay well you're gonna have to let your fingers do the walking and call a lot more attorneys cynthia when she was going through this called 50 attorneys so you're gonna have to call and you know try to find someone in your area or near your area how far are you from atlanta uh maybe two hours yeah, I, you might even want to extend your search to, uh, you know, a bigger uh, city, metropolitan area, where you might find more juvenile dependency attorneys or CPS defense attorneys. Yes, sir. Okay, so do that. Call us back in about three or four weeks. Give us an update, Alan. Alan, I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening to our show. Uh, we're going to take a break right now. This is The Secret. How to Fight Child Protective Services and when we'll be back with more stories and more questions.